Hi, I'm Peter Matthews, editor of Firehouse.com and Firehouse Magazine. Thank you for joining us on the latest Quick Chat. Uh, we're excited to be with the folks from Myco today. Uh, for those who don't know about Myco, Myco is a, a German-based manufacturer. They make the Top Clean 4, which is a, a, a product that's coming into the U.S. to help firefighters in their fight against cancer. Uh, as we all know at this point, uh, cancer is a leading cause of firefighter deaths. Uh, it's near and dear to the hearts of a lot of us. And uh, we're here today to learn about a product that's going to be able to uh, go into stations, get the equipment clean, clean quickly, and also uh, give firefighters uh, one more step in that effort to decon their equipment and uh, prevent them from, from uh, being diagnosed with firefighting cancer down the road. So I'd like to welcome Tommy Hughes and Dwayne Becknell, both from MICO. And, and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And can you tell us a little bit about yourselves, please? Thanks for having us, Peter. Uh, I've been with Myco for close to five years, and I work with architects, uh, food service consultants, planners, designers from the ground up, getting our equipment specified in the early stages of the projects. And our goal here with the firehouse is to work with firehouse architects and get it specified from the early stages so we can uh, make sure that we've got top clean M, top clean D within their decontamination room. Okay, great. And Dwayne? Yeah, I, I've worked with uh, Myco for th about 13 years now, and um, I'm a project engineer. I, I work with, I take the machines that come from Germany, and then we make different modifications and changes to adapt them to our market. And it's the same thing that we did with the, uh, the Top Clean series. And um, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll talk about that a little bit here in the video today and how departments can, can adopt that. So um, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, you know, the U.S. Fire Service over the last few years has really taken a look outside of the U.S. Uh, for solutions to help with firefighting equipment uh, and really with a big emphasis on firefighter safety. A lot of the firefighter safety programs that have come out, especially related to cancer, are coming from Europe and other countries. So can you tell us um, why MICO is coming into the U.S. Uh, with their product? Uh, you know, what, what's, what's the reason to come to North America at this point? So myco has been around for nearly 100 years in commercial wear washing, and we're a global leader when it comes to that segment. We've been doing top clean decontamination equipment since 2011 over in Europe. Okay. The idea came up in 2009 from uh, somebody associated with Myco saw us disinfecting some medical devices with our equipment and posed the question, could you not do this with our SCBA equipment in one of your washers. And that started a very in-depth process of uh, a study decontamination of their particular equipment and working with the manufacturers over in Europe on how their requirements would uh, be for the decontamination. And it was a couple year long process. And we ended up coming up with the Top Clean M series. Okay. And uh, finally, we brought it over here recently with the cancer rates being so high, 61% of firefighters getting line of duty cancer. That's a pretty big number and everybody's impacted by it. And if we have a tool to improve their quality of life and give them another layer of protection when it comes to mitigating cancer risk, then it's uh, it makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and so can you tell us what Top Clean M, what that actually does, uh, you know, what firefighters can use it for then? Basically, what, what we have is we have a, a machine that has a, has a pump in it and has a, has a tank. And we, we, we fill up the tank with, with um, water that's specified by the uh, manufacturer, the, the temperature, maximum okay. temperature. We put, a, we put a, a specific type of a chemical in there, a detergent. And then this, this is washed over your, um, your, your SEBA and different PPA pieces of equipment. And uh, then there's a rinse that rinses this off. And so then, okay. and so, so everything is very controlled, okay, as far as the spray pattern, the duration, the amount of water, everything's very controlled. So you get very consistent results. Um, okay. What we have is right now we have, we have two machines that we're offering. We have what's called the Top Clean D, and then we have the Top Clean M. And they can be used in conjunction with each other. And really to get the best results, you really, it's kind of really good to do this because 
the, the D is a much larger machine. And so you can put the entire SCBA in and then okay. you put the, you put the mask, but what we do is we put the mask on a head. And what that does is when you put the whole SCBA in the, the most amount of, um, of, of uh, cancer causing agents and PAH residue and stuff is going to be during that process because you're going to get the gross um, gross residue off. What we don't want to have happen is have that, that, that water get to the inside of the mask. And mm. that's why we put it on the head. So that, okay. that, so it acts like a regular face. So it prevents that water from going to the inside. So then after you're done with the, with the initial wash in the, in the, in the D, you then take the, take the SCB out, a, SCB eight out, and then you'd put the, uh, take the face piece and put it into the M. And in there you get a more, more finer cleaning. And then okay. it finishes off with a, with an RO rinse so that you get a, um, a nice clear lens and um, you don't have spotting or any of that kind of stuff on your lens. Okay. And, and so that, I mean, can you, can you tell us what the device looks like? I mean, you know, some of the pictures I've seen, it's, it, it looks like a, a large industrial, uh, almost like a dishwasher, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing that's going to take up a lot of space in your station. So it could be retrofitted into a station, uh, an existing station, mm -hmm. or if you're designing a station, it's something that can be, you know, dropped into a, a small cubby off the apparatus floor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. we, we've done that in several locations so far. Okay. Um, and, and we're also, like, like Tommy says, we're working with architects to design it in. So it's, um, it, it's always harder to put things in when they're an afterthought. Absolutely. You know, and it, and it never, it, it works out okay, but it doesn't work out as good as it could, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so you want to maximize so, yeah, yeah. So, and so going forward, the, the, really, the, the, a really good way is, you know, is to, is to um, have have a, a room that's designed, and that's kind of how they do it in Europe. They have a specific room for that process. Okay. So, so we we've talked about the what the top clean M is. So, obviously, firefighting equipment's a little bit different in Europe than it is here in the U.S. So, have you had to make any changes to um, your original? Um, product to bring it here and adapt it to U.S. or North American firefighting standards? There, there were a few changes we had to make as far as uh, temperatures and okay. then as far as the type of chemical that we use and then um, certain things about how our cycle is run and, and how, how, we, uh, how we fill and how we dump. Um, and uh, there, there's a couple of things here that are, that, are, that are a little bit different. They do a more intensive... Um, tear down of the equipment in Europe than we, we do over here. And, and the equipment here is not really designed to be done that way. So okay. in, so, in some ways, things are a little bit easier here as far as um, preparation and that kind of stuff. Um, but each manufacturer is gonna have its own specific processes, how they want you to um, wash the product and, and you know, in, our, in our equipment. Okay, great, great. And then, uh, you know, if, if departments are in the purchase purchasing process right now uh, for SCBA and, and related equipment, or if they're in the process of specking a station, uh, can they reach out to you to get some of those details uh, to learn more about uh, what they need to do to get into a, a, a future building? Absolutely. They can reach out to us and we can provide specification documents, any type of files that an architect would like to place into their plans to help improve okay. the process and planning and space requirements that they're going to need. Or if a department needs technical information on anything, they can always reach out to us and we can give them different information based on the size of the department, the type of machines and the capacity that they'll be able to get through on various times. All right. Great. Great. And, and so something we want to talk about, uh, which was brought up when we first initially started talking about this, and it's been, it's, it's in all the, the, the uh, product information, is the reverse osmosis process. I think that's something we really need to touch on here today so that our, our viewers understand what that is and how that goes into the MICO system. So can you talk, talk about reverse osmosis and how that ultimately impacts uh, the decontamination and cleaning of the equipment? With RO, what we're doing is we're, we're taking whatever tap water that you have, okay, and, and we and we feed cold water to the machine, and so when it comes in the machine, we first run it through a, a sediment filter, and then in the sediment filter we have a, 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 a we put something in there that'll protect the uh, the, the equipment and the RO membranes. It's, it's a um, polyphosphate, and then from okay. there we 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 go into a a, a pump kind of like what you use on like a carbonator to, to increase the pressure. And then it forces this through a, a solid um, 
carbon block filter. Because the, the, one of the problems that you have with RO in the United States is we have, tend to have a lot of chlorine and stuff in the water. And that'll, that'll destroy okay. the membrane. So it's really important that you get this stuff out. And so after it goes through the, the uh, carbon block, then we go through a series of uh, RO membranes. And what they do is they, 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 it's a semi-permeable membrane. So it pushes the water through these little pores. And, and okay. they're, they're, they're small enough only to allow the water molecules through. But the salt molecules are, are concentrated. You know, the, the different um, hardness and the different minerals are concentrated and they're rejected out. And so we only oh, fill wow. with very, very pure water. And so, so what that does is that w when, you, when you're washing with pure water and then you add detergent to it, it, it becomes very accepting. It wants to, um, wants to clean really, really, really bad. And mm -hmm. so you, you get really good cleaning results with it. And then when you rinse with this pure water, it rinses off all the residues and it, and it leaves a, a, a clean finish on the, uh, the, the lens and that kind of stuff. Well, so really, also, any of that residue you'd normally get cleaning with tap water, you know, that's that's completely out at this point. Yeah, the white, the white stuff that, that you'll see the white deposits on the lens. That's what that's mm -hmm. from. OK. OK, great. So at this point, uh, as we're bringing bringing top top clean uh, over here. The NFBA process, right, that's something that departments will want to know about. Um, so can you tell us about where your folks are at with the, the uh, NFPA approval process? And, uh, you know, what departments need to know about that, that step? Well, the NFPA approval that we, we, we have to do is really with the manufacturers because mm -hmm. they, they, they control all the process as far as the cleaning and maintenance of the equipment. And so we have to do testing with them to, um, to, to validate that it's not going to have a negative effect on the equipment. And so okay. we, we, we've done this validation testing with um, MSA and it's been completed. Um, also, we're, um, we're, we're working with Scott. We've, we've done initial testing with them, but we're still um, pending final approval. Okay. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. And Tommy, do you have something to add to that, that component? That being said, we can, any firehouses that are being designed now where the department is using Scott, by the time we get to implementing the equipment and the process, we'll have approval and we'll be good to go. Okay. All right. Great. Great. So as we wrap up today, you know, and I really appreciate you taking the time. I think this is going to be a vital tool uh, for stations across the country to start putting into their systems and, and hopefully the ability to, um, you know, retrofit current stations uh, to get this in. I think, you know, a lot of departments are making those um, modifications to their station to ensure that this equipment is being decontaminated to the best of its uh, ability. And this, this really ups that game quite a bit. So we're really excited to see that come here to the U.S. Um, so as we wrap up today, uh, Tommy, how can they reach out to your folks uh, or to you really uh, to learn more about the product? So they can reach out to us at our website, myco.us. That's M-E-I-K-O.us. Or if they want something direct or fast, they can email us at sales at myco.us. Sales at M-E-I-K-O.us. And we can get them any type of literature they need if they need to have any design drawings or planning assistance on decon rooms. That's something that we're here to support the architects, the fire departments, the chiefs, and everybody involved. Great. Okay. So thank you. That's, that's good. And, I, and we'll, we'll also put the, uh, the addresses up there too on, on the screen so folks can see that right there. So gentlemen, as we wrap up today, anything else that we should know about Top Clean M and, and, and what's, uh, what's coming down the pipe for the firefighters? The Top Clean Decon Series, it is a series. We've evolved to the D from the M and okay. there's a lot of other things coming down the pipe. We're partners with the firefighters. They come up with ideas all the time and we're here to support them and what the requests are, what they want to see in the field and what they can use to benefit them. So you will see more stuff coming out on the decon series in the future. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Dwayne, anything else before we, uh, we close up today? Um, you know, we have we have some machines on test right now. I'm not sure if we mentioned that. We have uh, um, yes, yes. I guess we talked about the ones in Pasco, but um, the, the some of the interesting things about the, the testing, um, which is 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 you know after they've been doing it for about they probably had that machine probably about 
eight or nine months now. And what we've noticed is that, you know, if you've ever been into a bunker room where, where the bunker gear is, there's always mm-hmm. kind of a, a smoky smell in there, you know, and yeah. what we've noticed is over time that it was, it's really telling because you, you walk into the, to the gear room and you, you don't smell smoke. It's, it's kind of yeah. weird to have that absent, you know what I'm saying? Because normally most of the ones you go yeah. into, yeah. you always smell that. And, it, and it's kind of weird yeah. not to smell it, you know? So I, I think we're, we're, on the, we're on the right track there. You know, as far as um, okay. and, and once you start continuously doing it um, and you get and, and this is something that we found, too, is that initially you get a lot of um, you get a lot out in the water. A lot comes out mm-hmm. when you put the packs in over time. It becomes less and less and less because you're keeping up with it. You know, now in yeah. Pasco, they have a pretty aggressive um, program for washing their stuff. So, OK, um, OK. That, that kind of helps so we out can too. look at them as a model yeah a model yeah. agency and yeah um the program yeah chief john schmidt he's he's um the 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 chief for uh health and safety and training and okay well we'll have to have him back on next time then and, yeah. and learn a little bit more about you absolutely so, okay you'd be amazed right. once you start putting your used scba gear into our equipment after you've been using a brush and bucket the amount of contaminants that come off after the initial wash, after you've been doing yeah. it the old school way for so long, that's pretty remarkable when you look at all the toxins and contaminants in the wash water after you've gone through a cycle. That's very telling. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the most visual um, um, scare tactic really you could use when it comes to firefighter cancer is when you deke on any equipment, you know, no, no matter how many times you've done it, uh, you, know, you can use the pressure of a hose line to clean up a hose and it's still just going to, you know, it's still going to roll out of uh, all this disgusting debris that that's, you know, killing firefighters. So, um, okay, guys. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk soon, folks. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. See you.